All right. Um, I thought this video have inspired me a lot. Go ahead. The 600 meter underway, Heather Dornard in Minnesota finished second this back a year ago. She was in lane four. And Dornan is probably going to be your favorite. She actually won the NCAA championships in 2006 in the 800, but she only won one Big Ten championship in the two years. Three laps in this event, 600 meters, three times around the 200 meter track here at the field house. What a bold move by Fallon. She's looking very confident, and the Penn State runner is just running amazing today. She did win her heat in the 400, but ended up taking fourth overall. That's Fawn Dorr moving into the lead, a sophomore from Penn State. Dornard in running second. Dornard in last year scored 23 points for the Golden Gophers in their Big Ten Championship. So they're really relying on getting a lot of points from her this weekend, and she's just coming by Fawn Dorr now in the home stretch, heading into the bell line. Gordon and falling down gets up quickly, but that's going to cost her. Lucky she wasn't injured. Her teammate just went to the front, though, so they may be able to recover from that. And Dornan is flying down the back she stretch. Is she catching is catching up. She is going to catch Fondor, and she may catch the leader. Wow. Wow. She's got Fon. This is a gutsy effort by Dornan. That is amazing. <laughs> to, to fall in a 600, I mean, this is basically a sprint. I mean, this is an extended 400, basically. To, to fall with 200 meters to go. What do you think? Awesome, isn't it? She fell down, but the truth is, she did not give up. You know, I want to encourage you, some of you today, I don't know for whom, God had laid on my heart to show this video the other day when I was watching. It's got nothing to do with the message I'm preaching. But I'm sharing it with you. Do not give up just because you fell. Do not give up just because there is something that is coming on your way. Block you. That is not where we stop. That's not a place for us to stop. But for us to pick up and run back. We might be winning the, winning the race. If you don't run back, you will never know. You have to fight back. Amen. I want to encourage everybody here. Do not give up. Keep running. Keep going at it. Keep holding on to your faith. God is about to manifest himself. Amen? Awesome. All right. Let's get into the word of God today. If you need Bibles, they are in the back. Please go grab one. We have English and Spanish. <clears throat> Go with me to the book of Matthew. Twenty first chapter, starting from forty second verse. Gospel according to Saint Matthew. 21st chapter, starting from 42nd verse. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you. And given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone. Will be broken. But on whomever it falls. It will grind him to powder. Father God we come before you. Today seeking your face. Your direction and your wisdom. And your revelation God. The things that we are gonna, you are going to reveal to us. They are awesome, and we, we receive them by faith. And we pray, God, that you would lead us through this, uh, um, through, the, uh, through, through this time of learning your word. Give us the insight. 
Give us the concepts that we need so that we can go further in accordance to your will. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> this is one of the, um, what I think is a, kind of like a confusing scripture. It confuses, the reason is, Jesus is presented to us in this passage as a stone. A stone that is being rejected by the builders and becoming the chief cornerstone. And that same stone, if you go down, it describes, it will break people. Whoever falls on it will be broken. But the other side is, if the rock falls on somebody, it's going to crush them. So when I look at that scripture, it almost looks like, okay, Jesus is going to crush somebody. So, um, so that, 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 that's, that's a, a point that we have to keep in mind that uh, the stone that is being rejected by people is the same stone Um, the, the same stone that is being rejected is the same stone that is now crushing somebody. And when we look at it just from that, that point of view, uh, it, what it does to us is that uh, is Jesus. If somebody doesn't accept Jesus, or if somebody that is not in line with what Jesus wants them to be, is it that Jesus is going to crush is, is, is a thought. It's just a thought. I'm, I'm going to dig further into this as we go on into the, into the word. This is a very important scripture. I always like this scripture so much. Because what it, what it does is it, it breaks somebody. It, 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 a breaking is something uh, as we go down, we will, uh, I, I would like to present what, a, what breaking does to us. How it can be a help or it cannot be a help. So I, w I would like for us to figure that out as we go down. So um, go with me uh, to the book of Daniel chapter 1 starting from verse 1. When we go to the book of Daniel starting uh, chapter 1 verse 1. This is one of the most fascinating books in the Bible for me. If anybody who is interested in uh, doing a Bible study in Revelation, I seriously encourage you to study Daniel also. Daniel, uh, the, prophet, the, the revelation that God has given Daniel and uh, the revelation that was given to God, uh, uh, given to John by God, if you compare them both, they have so, mu so much in common. They both work like question and answer sometimes. So if you really want to understand uh, eschatology or if you want to understand how the, the, uh, the days of uh, tribulation and all those kinds of things, try to study them both together. You will have a great understanding of it. And that great man of God, we talk about him and we take a lot of inspiration from him, from Daniel, because he is somebody who have, uh, 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 who not only changed the course, but he also was there in the presence of God and was able to predict the future. Was able to see the future with God. So he was able to bring some things onto the table that, that would impact uh, uh, our life so much as Christians. As believers who believe in Jesus Christ. So in here, I want us to uh, study the story of uh, Daniel, a few verses on the in the first chapter, so that we can uh, get on this. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, uh, king of Judah, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave the king of Judah into his hand with some of the articles of the house of God which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the articles into the treasure house of his God. Then the king instructed Eshpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men 
in whom there was no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve the king's palace, and whom they might teach the language and literature of Chaldeans. Um, the king appointed for them a daily provision of king's delicacies and uh, of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them, so that at the end of the time they might serve before the king. And that's the beginning of this story, the story of Daniel. The, um, the story of Daniel starts with slavery. They were enslaved by a foreign king and now they are living under the influence of a different king. The, the, the point that I want us to go after today is this. Uh, the, the, the fourth verse, young man in whom there was no blemish. What, what was the reason for them to pick these young men? There is a reason why they picked these young men. What the reason is simple, he says, to whom they might teach. In other words, they are picked from different cultures and different backgrounds. They are bringing them to a point and trying to teach them the language or the culture of that land. The title of my message today is Brainwash. If you, look at, uh, if you look at the concept here, what they are doing is they are bringing the young people and then now they are training how they should think. How they ought to be thinking about things how, uh, in their life and how they ought to work with the things that happen around them. They are trying to control how they process everything. And in through that, what are they doing? Those are the people that are going to run the state. Everybody, everything that is going to happen in that land is going to be done through these people. But these people are being brainwashed. When I look at this thing, it only reminds me of our, our times now. We see people that are being bombarded every day. As a, as a matter of fact, every day when we sit uh, to watch news or to listen news, what are they doing? Their job is to brainwash us. Their job is to control us. That is what they do. Their, their job is to make us sit with them however long they want to talk. So they try to control us. And when we go to schools, what, are, what is happening these days, university, what is supposed to be a place of diversity, where there needs to be an openness for thoughts, where there needs to be a, a different ideology, multiple ideologies going together, unity in diversity, that is what university is. But these days when we look at universities, what they are doing is, they are trying to deal, teach them one concept. And this is it. What, whoever questions this is a beggar. That's what, that's what we are hearing. Or denier. And it, it, it is trying to control us in such a way, the system, uh, when it is through the, either through the education or through the news media or through any other marketing area or anything like that. For them, UNE is not an individual, is a number. They want to control us. They look at us, okay, who watched this show, TRP ratings, or who did this. They always want everything to be under control. So they try to influence us in such a way, trying to tell us this is good, this is not good. You should do this, you shouldn't do this. The problem in that concept here for me is simply like this. Simply this. How much do the, does these people know? The very voices that are trying to control us, the very voices that are trying to influence us, the very voices that are trying to take leadership and ownership of us, how much do you know? Can they stand with us when we are battling cancer? Can they be with us when we are battling with, uh, the, uh, with, uh, with a marital issue? Can they stand with us to, to walk through the most depressing situation in our life. So this is where we have to understand a point 
There is a real help. And then there is a controlling help. Which, is, which voice is influencing us? Is the voice that controls us is influencing us? Or is a voice that is letting us lead life is controlling us? It's our choice today. It, it, it pretty much looks like that for me when I look at the story. So it's, been, it's not anything new what is happening now. When you look at things and think, oh man, in my days it was like this. We always try to say that. You know, as if we were living here for thousands of years. You know, we, <laughs> we probably saw a generation or two. That's the max. Some of, some of you. But people like me, maybe just half a generation. But uh, uh, <clears throat> after, seeing, uh, after seeing, we try to say, oh, those days are better. Those days. No, no, no. This is a concept that is going on throughout mankind's life. What happens is everybody's thoughts needs to, needs to be influenced. They want to control people's thoughts. Everything around us is trying to control us how to think. And that's exactly how we are being uh, programmed. Because what happens? As a man thinketh, so is he. Amen? If we are thinking like a certain things, we go do that. When you are being tempted every day, you got to have this car. You got to have this car. What is the option? Oh, you get you go buy a credit uh, on your credit. Have a good credit score. You can have a loan and go buy the car. Or you can do this. You can do this. They are all trying to tempt you every day. They are trying to lure you. We the, we are being bombarded every day to think like how they want you to think. You got to have this. No, I don't. Can we say that? No, I don't. You know, just because Matthew McConaughey is driving Lincoln, I don't need no Lincoln. <laughs> All right. So they're trying. Every single day, voices around us are trying to influence us, trying to control us, trying to pull us to a point where they can tell what to do, what not to do. That's what is happening every, in every area of our life. And there... This young man were picked, handpicked, literally handpicked. The good quality people, high people. It almost feels like Ivy Ivy League schools. They are handpicked into the Ivy League schools, and they come out from Ivy League schools, and they try to tell us what to do. They never uh, they never wrenched the board in their life, and they try to tell us how to wrench it. You know, they never did anything, and they tried. That's exactly how the society runs. We always need to be open about these things and think through clearly. Don't get me wrong. I'm not preaching any political message here. I'm, I'm trying to tell us how things are being done even before we can realize this is how it is being done. It, it goes on in their lives. They are brainwashed. They are trying to teach them. They are trying to control them. And as a matter of fact, why they are picking young people? And this is where I want, I want us, everybody, whether you are young, whether you are old, it doesn't matter. Age is not the matter here. It is your state of mind. When you, young is when you will form your thought process. When you, when you are young, that's when you will think, okay, this is what is right. This is how I should go. This is how I should do. That's where, that's where they're trying to control us. They're trying to form our thoughts. Remember what the Bible says. Bible says do not be conformed to this world. Don't be formed to this world. But be ye transformed. There is a formation change that we need to have. That formation change can happen only through our thinking. So they are trying to control that part. That is not just a man-made idea, I personally believe the devil tries to be in those details. He tries to control us. Oh, this is how it's going to work. Oh, when you are not convenient, when you don't have, you know, when, when it is getting hard, you can give up. Or when you say, okay, the, the, uh, uh, the doctor said you have cancer and you only have a year to live. Okay, I, I, all this information that we are getting. Or, oh, if you are a teenager, you get affected by this. Oh, you got to look like this. You got to eat like this. You got to do this. And, uh, and many times we forget to think, okay, what is God wanting me to do? 
Many times we don't try to take into consideration that what is God wanting me to do? And then what we happen is when we start learning things, when we think we have learned it all, what we do is we become judgmental. We start judging others because they are not like us. Bless God you are not like me because God doesn't need more of me. He already created me. I am unique. That's enough. The earth can't bear more than one me. That, that's enough. The same way God created every one of us, uniquely crafted us, fearfully made. God made us in such a, with such an ideology or such a, such a concept that you cannot duplicate yourself. You know, many people uh, try to say, oh, cloning is going to be, don't have to work, whatever. But I want to tell you something. No matter how, tech, how much of a technology you pick up, you cannot be replicated. You are so unique. God created you so uniquely that no one can replace you. And that's where we even have to accept the other person. Other person should not be like you. If he or she is like you, you both are robots. Be careful. We don't need everybody to be like us. We shouldn't need everybody to be like us. You know, we have to have diversity. We, diversity. We have to have openness to ideas, I, 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 other concepts, people. We grow from each other. We help each other. We learn from each other. That's how God created the body of Christ. So that we can help each other. We can stand with each other. We can stand for each other. What you have, I need it. What I have, you need it. That is how God created us. So that we both can help each other. And get stronger. And lead a life that brings glory to God. Amen. Accept your diversity, your uniqueness. We need to accept that. Oh, we always try to compare ourselves with others. We try to put ourselves in a place like, oh, oh I wish I was like that. I wish I had that. I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you something. You are belittling your God. Because God created you so uniquely. You don't need to compare with anybody but yourself. You are your own competition. Nobody else. Not perfection. You, you continually continue to grow. Perfection is not something you can achieve. That is a state God gave, bestowed on us. Perfection, only perfection on this earth. I'm going to tell you, simple. Ladies, I'm trying to liberate you. All right. <laughs> I know my wife is always like, it's got to be perfect. I'm like, it's never going to be perfect. <laughs> you know, we have, a, we have an 80 year old. The first thing we, after we clean, the next thing I see is my son has cars or food or something around the floor. So it's never going to be perfect in the house. But anyway, but what I'm trying to say, no, not that are not like that, they are men, men too, but uh, we kind of are low, on the low side of that disease. But <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, <clears throat> perfection can be attained only through one thing, is the love of God. You need to love yourself, learning how to love yourself, and then we need to give that love to others. You know, the, 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 when we saw the, the, the video in the, a moment ago, that lady fell down and picked back and ran back because she is confident with herself. If she had stopped there, she would never go. She can never attain what God have, what, what the, what, today we are clapping for her. We, we don't even know who she was, but we take inspiration from what she have done. Am I right? That's what your life is. Pick yourself up and run back at it. How can you do that when you do not know that God loves you? When you do not know you are created to be unique. When you do not know there is an opportunity with God. There is an option with God. There is something big God can do through you. What God can do through you, he cannot do through Billy Graham even. He has done what he can do through Billy Graham. It's, it's that. With you, God wants to do. God wants to finish his course. Let us partake in it. Let us participate in it. At least somebody is excited for me. My little guy there. <laughs>
So they, these people are trying to influence them, trying to control them. And now comes the play, p- position. God, what, did, what, did he, what the king does is he appoints them a daily provision. From king's delicacies, not any raggedy food, the best of the land is being provided for them. The wine, the meats, whatever king would eat is being provided for them. Now from among those, the sons of Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were picked. To them, the chief of eunuchs gave the names to Daniel to be Belshazzar. Look, how names are being changed. Why names need to change? Think of that for a second. Because they are trying to change the purpose of their life. The name in, 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 in our uh, society, we may not think of the significance of name. The name means you are being called to be something. You're being named for something. So now the, the Jewish people, the people who had a covenant with God, the, 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 those people are being pulled out from their group and being called according to the norms of the land. They are changing them from where they were to where they want to be. Where these people, the controlling people, they're trying to control them. And uh, they they gave a new name for them. Daniel's name is Belshazzar uh, to Hananiah, Shadrach to Mishael, Meshach, and Azariah, Abednego. These are all Chaldean names or Babylonian names. These are all the Babylonian kingdom. You know, we know those, those people more by the Babylonian name than by... The name that God, the, the, the Hebrew names for them. But, but in, in the midst of all these things, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, my question here is, Is Daniel defiling himself by eating meat? Or is Daniel defiling himself by eating a system that is trying to control him? I just want you to think of that. Many times I see people following Daniel fast. They give up on meats and they just go with the vegetables and all that. Which is awesome. However, God leads you to do it. Some people pick that up as a lifestyle. Which is awesome again. Do it. If that works, that's awesome. That's more kudos for you. I, you know, keep doing that. However God leads you, however God uh, directs you, we have to go with that part. But here, is it that because he gave up on meat, that he was able to be blessed? That is the point that I want us to think for a moment. That's not the big thing here. What he, what, 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 he made a, he purposed, purposed himself in, in, in himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of eunuchs. Why? Because Daniel had a mission. He doesn't want to defile himself. He didn't want to be controlled by the system around. He wants to be influenced only by his God. By the people around, not by the society around, but he wants to be influenced by God who created them. By God who is telling them what to do, why I have put you on this earth. Many times we miss that concept. Many times our plans or the plans around us, are our, around the society, becomes the more prominent plan in our lives. And we often try to think that there is no way around. This is how we have to do. Because everybody is doing this, I have to do this. Because everybody is walking like this, I will walk like this. No, God has called you to be a peculiar generation. A unique generation. Where you can be bold enough to say, okay, I am not doing this. I don't have to do this. This is what we have to adapt even when we are following our God. As a, as a kid, when I was, uh, be, I, I, I was brought up in a Christian family, every Sunday, without a question, I went to church. 
Every Sunday I was there at church. I was there. I gave my offerings. I did all kinds of things in the church. But that I was doing it as a family tradition. Because the family is doing, so I'll do it. That's what I, 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 I was raised up with. I was raised in, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this. But the truth is, that never gave me a personal relationship with God. And this is where, you know, when you, anything that you eat, you build an appetite for it. You, you like something, you don't like something. So I don't like this thing. I don't want to eat this. Or when you do certain things, when you wear certain things, you always try to figure out. Uh, well, okay, my mom never wore this, so I'm not going to wear it. You won't say that. But when it comes to God, we are not trying to have that unique relationship. We are not trying to build our own personal connection with God. God has designed us to build our own personal connection with Him. God needs us to have that unique connection so that He can show the unique potential of you to this world and to yourself. God wants to show how strong you are, how able you are, how wonderful you are, and how amazingly made in His image. He wants to show it to yourself, not to anybody else. He wants to show it to you. How strong you are, how great of a woman you are, how great of a man you are, how great of a child you are. He wants to show it to you if you let Him. Instead of trying to follow the God or the systems of the fathers, let's work for it. Let's figure out what is this God. Let me have that personal relationship with God. Let me connect with this God in a personal way that I can grow strong with this. Trust me, this Daniel fast. Anybody who wants to try it, try it. Give up on the meat. It works very well. If you like it, I'm not forcing, but that's an awesome, awesome way. I've, I've done it many times and it, it have, it, it, it's your body also so much, but, <clears throat> um, and then now God gave, God gave him the favor. The chief of eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my Lord, the King who has appointed your food and drink for why should he see your faces looking worse than the young men who are your age? Then you would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servants for ten days, and let them uh, give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance be examined before you, appearance of young men who eat the portion of king's delicacies. And as you see fit, so deal with your servants. So he consented with them in this matter and tested them for 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of king's delicacies. Thus the steward took away their portions of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. And for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. This is about our consecration, our commitment to our God. Not letting the world system defile us. What is happening here? I want us to look at the symbol. Just to go to the next slide, please. If you look at this, what comes to your mind? I know some of you are uh, uh, Star Wars geeks. You should know what that symbol says, right? No, you don't? You guys need to watch Star Wars. We need to pray for you. But anyway, <laughs> that's the symbol of resistance. And... And, uh, any, you know, it's okay. <laughs> we forgive you. <laughs> but <clears throat> what Daniel was doing here is he is resisting a system that is trying to control him. He's trying to push back at a system that is trying to take over him, to manipulate him, to brainwash him. That system, Daniel is resisting it.
What does the word of God say? If we look at it in the in uh, James fourth chapter sixth and seventh verse, we're going to come back to this story. James uh, fourth chapter sixth and seventh verse. I'm going to read it for you. But he gives grace more. Gra he gives more grace. Therefore, he says. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Many times we wish the devil leaves us alone. Many times we want the devil to leave us alone. Why are you messing with my life? Get, you know, many times we even question God. Why in the world devil is working in my life? Many times we wonder, like, if God so loves me, why in the world he allowed devil to tempt me? Or we even have this question, the age-old question, about why Eve got tempted to in the first place. If there was no devil, there is no reason for her to be tempted. The truth is, you are, under, you are misunderstanding the point. A weaker person is tempting a stronger person. The devil is a weaker person. You are stronger than the devil. Otherwise he wouldn't be saying resist the devil and he will flee. That is your position. That is your power. Instead of looking at it like that, what are we doing? We are looking at vi as victims. We need to change our mindset from that and come back up saying, I am not going to let you win over me. I'm going to resist you. Every thought that is trying to bombard me, every idea that is trying to control me, every time when you are trying to wake up, get back and pick up, when the devil is trying to tell you, you are good for nothing, you are going to fail, you are going to fall, that's when you will say, I resist you. I, I'm not going to let you come in. You cannot influence my thinking. You cannot control how I think. I'm not going to let you tell me how I, what to do, when to do, what, to, where to do. He is not the one who is in charge of your life. Can somebody say amen to that? The devil is not the in charge of your life. God is the in charge of your life. If there is somebody who can tell you what to do, what not to do, that is God and God alone. Amen. Jesus alone paid the price to redeem us from the curse, to bring us into the blessing of Abraham or the blessing of the Lord. And he alone deserves our loyalty, not anybody else. He alone has the right to say, yes, sir. Not to anybody else, not to anything else. What, da what Daniel was doing is he is creating a resistance, a force. And he was doing it so smartly. And he's creating that line of defense, line of resistance. How did he do that line of resistance? Throughout the whole book of Daniel, if you keep reading and continue to read his life, you will see him go through multiple kings. And he, in spite of all those things, he was the most successful man in, God, in king's court. He was pulled down many times. He was thrown to lion's den. He was pushed, tested multiple ways. Yet he comes back strong. The reason is he learned how to build a resistance. How to stop what is trying to control him. Can I pray today for all of us that we will be able to see what we need to resist? This is what we need. Somebody, instead of having a wishbone, I want some of us to have a backbone. If anybody who is willing to have a backbone, can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Awesome. I have a rowdy gang here. I'm excited now. You know, we need to be people with backbone, not wishbone. I wish I had a successful life. I wish my, wife, my life was like this. I wish I was a better mom. I wish I had this. I wish I did this. That I want you to know something. You are telling yourself that you are weak. You're telling yourself that you're going to fail. You're telling yourself you are not fit enough for this game. But here is the good news. 
The word doesn't stop there. That's what Jesus came for. He said, it is not over. I have come into your life that you might have and enjoy life to the full till it overflows. That is your position. That is your authority. That is your right in the kingdom of God. He needs you to take up your God. He needs to put a fence over you, pushing this devil out of your life. Today I want to teach you three things that Daniel have done. Three lines that he drew in his life. Three lines. If we can draw those three lines in our lives, I believe the success of Daniel will flow into our lives. Can somebody, is anybody who want, in here who wants that? I want to see the same success rate as Daniel. When I walk into lion's den, I'm not fearing the lion. I'm going to walk out free. When I am being cast down into fire, I'm going to walk out free. When I am being pushed against all that I believe, when I'm being challenged with everything that can challenge me, I am going to walk boldly. Today we are living a life of compromise. We are trying to live a life that is full of compromise. We are trying to uh, pacify every, uh, every concept around the world. I want to tell you something. Even the, uh, even the people that are in the marital relationship, I want to tell you something today. You are not there to please your spouse. It is hard for you to please your spouse when that is your goal. But if you put God as the one that you want to please, I'm going to tell you without any shadow of doubt, you will be a better husband than you can think. You will be a better wife than you can think. Because God is the one who created your spouse. He will reveal things to you that, that nobody can do that for you. And I have a great marriage. I love my wife so much. I've been married almost 10 years. And I, we have a great relationship. One of the great things about a relationship is this. She comes every now and then. She, not every now and then. It happens very often. He says, I was exactly wanting that. Including something that she wanted to eat. Including something that she wanted to dress up. Or including something she wanted to watch. Or including something she wanted to do. The reason I'm able to do that is not because my target is to please her. Trying to look into her diary, trying to look into her text, finding out what she wants, what she doesn't want. I'm not looking into, into anything, but I am seeking the face of God. Every single day I pursue to please God, where God will be le leading me, revealing things unto me, so that I can be the best husband I can to her. I want to make it hard for my wife to give up on me. She cannot give up on me because I'm going to engulf her with all the love I have. With all the love God has poured in my life. I want to seek the face of God every single day of my life. So that I can be the best husband into her life. I can be the best dad for my son. Because my, my pursuit is not trying to please those people. But to please God. When I put God in the right place, He is trying to reveal to me. He is trying to give me the wisdom, give me the insight, the concepts, how I can do the best on this earth. When I pastor this church, I don't pastor it to please anybody that comes here. I love you all. I pray for you. I would, if I have to, I would stand in fire for your sake. There is no doubt about it. But I cannot do that to please you. But I do that because I want to please my God. In through that, I love you more than you can imagine. In through that, I'm able to do my job much better than you can think. Because I'm not trying to please everybody. Because what Liz likes, Lori, Lori, Lori doesn't like. She doesn't like those things. We both are not same. If I'm trying to please one person, I'm always in struggle. Because I won't be able to please the other person. But if I'm trying to please God, He is always trying to bring things to unity. He's always trying to work things to, for our favor. Let God do God's job while we do our job. Our job is to believe and to follow him. Daniel did the same thing. He believed in his God and he followed him by resisting the devil. He put on a resistance. Three things he did in that resistance. What, what are those three things? He drew three lines of resistance. I'm going to tell you, go there, go there. Line of training his appetite. 
what he wanted to feed himself what he is trying to feed himself i'm not talking just about food food only can benefit your body but i'm talking about what is being fed into your mind your eye gate your ear gate is trying to feed you every day it is trying to control your thinking what you are being exposed to is trying to influence you and when when what is influencing you can you control it can you say no to the seemingly great piece of pie seemingly a great chicken leg can we say no to that you know that's not food i'm not talking just the food i'm talking about the mental food can we guard our minds can we guard our hearts we even guard our bodies and we if we put that line of a lion uh, that that line to to resist the devil who is trying to invade our appetite then when you look at daniel's life with the first thing he chooses is i'm not going to eat i'm not going to defile myself is eating is simple what consuming he is being consumed by what is being offered are we consuming it or are we resisting it when when the devil is trying to tell you you are not fit for it are you consuming it or are you resisting it when the devil is trying to tell you your marriage is never going to get better are you consuming it or are you resisting it i'm praying for you right now while i'm preaching that that god will give a crystal clear hearing and a crystal clear distinction when the devil is trying to control you you will be able to see I want you to have this uh, part of your prayer every day. Ask God, help me see things clearly, God. Give me the discernment when I where I can see which spirit is controlling me. Let me see it for myself. If you are willing to ask that from God, he is willing to pour that for you. He wants to reveal things to you. He wants you to walk on this earth just like he does on heaven. Can somebody say amen to that? He wants you to live just like that. Without sin, without failure, without blemish. He wants you to stand up and st- stand strong for him. Your life is not a life of failures or misfits. God created you and ordained you for his perfect will. No matter how many times you have failed, get back and go to the throne room of grace where you w- where he will bestow his grace upon you, where you can run after what God has planned. Amen. The second line he drew, the line of dependence. He did not depend on the food, but he depended on God. I don't know. I'm 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 a, I'm a skeptic about this. Did the vegetables help him glow? I don't know. But I certainly know for sure that God their God for sure helped him. when you make yourself when you are trying to separate yourself and stand for god and 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 stop the devil and depending on god instead of depending on the devil you know many times when we read the scripture resist the devil and it will flee you, you, you we all get excited about that that part but the truth is in the in the first part of that scripture submit yourself to the lord that's the key part for your resistance submitting under your god And now what what he did is I'm going to depend on God. Not on myself, not on my talents, not on what I can do, what I cannot do. He depends on God. Many times remember when 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 uh, 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 when the king had a dream, he wa- he comes with an interpretation. Nobody else could do that. All the people who ate from king's delicacies couldn't interpret it. but bless god a jewish boy who had a resistance was able to interpret it because he was not depending on himself or he was not depending on the world's knowledge he is depending on the eternal wisdom of god can we do the same thing today saying i'm going to depend on the wisdom of god not what i think is the best god knows best for me god's plan is the best plan for me god is walking me through everything so that i can walk out of this victoriously Even if I'm going through hell, I know I am coming out of this hell victoriously. Hell is not going to stop me because heaven is where I belong. Amen. God have called us for eternal life, not eternal death. 
That's the second line of uh, uh, resistance he drew. There's a third line he did. Line of confidence. He wasn't worried when he was thrown into the lion's den. He said, my Lord will protect me. And not only that, many times he says, don't worry, I'm going to bring the revelation to you. I'm going to give you the insight because I know my God. When you are going through your day-to-day -day jobs, when you are trying to figure out those things, you might feel like, man, I can't do this. But I want to encourage you today, draw a line of confidence, the confidence in God, that God will supply all your needs. That need might be wisdom, that need might be favor, that need might be money, that need might be health. No matter what that need might be, He wants to supply it to you. Let us have confidence in His provision. He is the one who is going to protect us. When you are going through hell, it seems like everything is going to fall apart. Go through him. Go through with him. He has the answers for us. When this whole world is trying to figure out what and how and why, why this is going to work, why this is not going to work. God said, I know it all. I'm going to take counsel from somebody like that, not somebody who is trying to figure out. Are you smart? If you are smart, you would choose somebody who knows something about it. Or not something, everything about it. I'm going to choose counsel from somebody who knows everything, not half-baked knowledge. You know, we can depend on all the knowledge in this world. It changes every day. Last time when I studied about water, they said, oh, water is the best thing. Even when you don't feel thirsty, drink water. The latest study says if you drink like that, you're going to be dead. That's the latest study. You won't believe, read it. But anyway, every day it is changing. Everything is changing. They don't know everything. They can't figure out everything. Because our knowledge is limited. And that's where we need to have confidence in his provision. God knows. That's why David boldly says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. And he even boldly says. Yeah though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because he is smart. Because he is a warrior. Because he knows how to kill a lion. No, no, no. He says. Because the Lord is with me. He has that confidence that God is not going to let him go. This youthful deal that, that the Bible is talking about with Daniel. This is not something that happens at a young age. It, 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 is, it happened and it continues to happen in our lives. That's why the Bible calls us to resist the youth, youthful lusts. When we are young, when, when our mind is forming on certain things. We, we start thinking certain way and, 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 and then we try to form a thought process for our life. This is it. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to encourage you, my brothers and sisters today. Be open. Be open for God's correction. If you are willing to, to have a correction from God. If you are willing to give up on ideology that you have built. If you are willing to say, God, what I know is not all. I want, I want to learn from you. I want to know more of you. The more we put ourselves in that place, the stronger we will get. And we're going to see great results in our lives. Amen. All these three lines of resistance. I want to encourage you today. So that we are not brainwashed. We are not being controlled by the system. That is trying to devour us. Instead we are going to be influenced by a system. That is trying to live, help us live. Live in abundance. Amen. All right, it's time for us to uh, sow our uh, offerings. Let Pastor Warren, I'm going to let Pastor Warren receive the offering. But before we get into the offering, I have a small announcement to make. <coughs> if you see uh, in that bin uh, where we use, we normally use, uh, put our bread. We started putting some food items, canned food, non-perishable food. Um, this is the, this is, we calling, we're calling that Covenant Fusion Church blessed to be a blessing. It's not a donation box. I want you to hear me through with this. This is a place, if you have some food that you're not using, you want to share with anybody here or anybody around, bring it here. We can fill that up. 
at the same time, if there is something that you see there, you want it, please take it. This is not just a one-way thing. It's a two-way thing. It is for being given as well as to give. So that bucket stays up. There won't be any lock over it. Nothing like that. Anybody who wants to bring, bring it. Anybody who wants to take it, continue to take it. I pray God will bless it and multiply for us. And this will go around. Even if you know of somebody around that might be, that might be going through some rough time. Take some food from here. Happily, do not, do not feel bad about it. Take some food. Even if it is the last can in there, take it. No problem. God will provide it. God will replenish it. He can take care of it. And that, that con let it continue to bless. Take it and be, be, use it. And always remember, you are blessed to be a blessing. You are blessing somebody. You are blessing yourself. Something. Do it. Put it in action. God is going to work it out. Amen. And not only that, on the other side, there is a bag full of... Uh, 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 shampoos and stuff like that, the sample things that I put in. If you know of somebody that needs them or somebody, uh, 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 homeless people or somebody you want to bless, take some and give them. Use it. We are blessed to be a blessing. Continue to be a blessing in this community. Amen. Amen. God bless you.